I'm stuck in a bad relationship. I think you're stuck in a bad relationship, too. In fact, I think we're all stuck in a bad relationship, and I'll tell you why. Two planets walk into a bar. <laughs> One has amazing peaks and lush valleys and blue oceans, clear skies and green forests. The other, she's sick, she's barren, she's pockmarked and brown and burning up with, with, uh, with a fever. They belly up to the bar, size each other up. The healthy planet looks over at the sick planet and says, Darling, you don't look so well. You really think you should be out? Shouldn't you be home resting? Sick planet says, <clears throat> Well, if you'd just gotten the news I got from my doctor, you'd need a drink too. Why? What's wrong? Well, he said I have a case of something called the humans. <laughs> healthy planet says, Oh, don't you worry about that. I used to have humans. Look at me now. Sick planet says, well, how'd you get better? Well, darling, I just got rid of them. Ba-boom. As this uh, joke and its dark humor shows us, the planet will be fine without us, but we cannot live without a healthy planet. And we're stuck in a bad relationship with planet Earth, with Mother Earth. And what's the hallmark of a good relationship? Respect, trust, communication? Well, we're certainly not listening to the planet, are we? The planet's speaking loud and clear, if not screaming at us, about deforestation, ocean, ocean acidification, climate change. And we're just not listening. We're not responding. Rather, we just keep taking while our partner thr uh, continues to suffer while we thrive in so many ways. Well, it's not just the planet <clears throat> that uh, we're stuck in a bad relationship with. It's women and girls as well. And as the planet suffers, we see that women and girls suffer too. Recently, the UN released a report on this very topic about women, gender equality, and climate change. And it says, <clears throat> I quote, women are more vulnerable to the effects of climate change than men, primarily as they can constitute the majority of the world's poor, and are more dependent on their livelihood, on natural resources that are threatened by climate change. Furthermore, they face social, economic, and political barriers that limit their coping capacity. So, what do we do? How do we get out of this bad relationship? And how do we learn from what's going on? Well, recently, in February, I journeyed to a place where these two challenges, these two bad relationships, are more interlinked than anywhere else, and perhaps on planet Earth. I was able to go to the Congo, a place that is rich in natural resources and home to more rare earth minerals than probably any other place on the planet. And there's, these rare earth minerals are essential to our cell phones and other electronic goods, which we've become so dependent on, which we supposedly need for our daily lives. And what's happened? Well, our militia, who depend on profiting from these rare earth minerals, use rape of women and girls to control and continue to profit from these rare earth minerals. Over half a million women and girls have been raped in the last 10 years alone in the Congo. The rape capital of the world, as a UN official has recently put it. And why? Because we're so dependent on these cell phones and electronic goods. I had the good fortune to dance with hundreds of these women, many of whom have been raped multiple times, their lives destroyed and taken from them. And they danced with joy. They danced with love. They didn't hold back. And I was forever touched and humbled and honored to be able to dance with them. And I was convinced that I could, that we all could do something about it. That yes, as consumers, at the very least, we could demand cell phones and electronic goods that are conflict mineral free. And progress is being made thanks to activists and consumers around the world. But that's not enough. We need to not just continue to allow ourselves to be defined as consumers. We need to reclaim our role as citizens. Yes, we need to vote and hold our leaders and elected officials accountable and demand action on these global issues of great importance. We need to volunteer in our community, but that's not enough either. I think we need to empower and call upon all of our citizens to become citizen entrepreneurs people who love their home, who love the earth, 
who connect the dots to the global challenges we face. On my journey, I was fortunate enough to meet an, an, another person, uh, Pam DeShield, an amazing activist from the Lower Ninth Ward. Now, Pam, Pam loved her neighborhood. She loved her home. She loved planet Earth. And Pam led her neighborhood after Hurricane Katrina to make a commitment, a crazy idea, to create the first carbon neutral neighborhood in the United States of America. And sadly, Pam passed away two years ago, but she, lead, she left behind an amazing legacy. Thanks in great part to Pam. There are more certified green homes than any other neighborhood in America in the Lower Ninth Ward. Quite an amazing legacy she left behind. And a big step towards creating that carbon neutral neighborhood she dreamed about. <clears throat> so what do we do? What if we, what if we valued and celebrated people like Pam? People who love their home, who love their neighborhood, who love planet Earth. And what if Vanity Fair created the new establishment list of citizen entrepreneurs? What if Forbes 400, rather than listing the 400 richest people in, Amer in not just America, but around the world, created the Forbes 400 of citizen entrepreneurs? <laughs> and I'm not just talking about the people who are fortunate to run nonprofit organizations or CEOs of corporations that have a commitment to social change. I'm talking about teachers and parents and nurses and mothers and fathers in their neighborhood who, who care and have a crazy idea and do something about it or model another successful idea somebody else has. That's what citizen entrepreneurship is all about. So what if we, like Pam, loved our home, loved our neighborhood, loved the earth? What if we decided we wanted to listen? And we wanted to be in a good relationship. And we wanted to get out of this bad relationship. Because if we don't, we risk what stands to be a very nasty breakup. Thank you.